Welcome to chapter 14.7, and this is this is the beginning of probably one of the most useful sections of uh, Math 114, although I'd say all of chapter 14 is pretty darn useful uh, in terms of where you'll see it in the future, if, you'll do, if you're doing anything quantitatively, that is, um, whether you want to take other classes or, you know, you want to go to a career that's quantitatively inclined, uh, this... This section here, very important. The next section is even more important. Um, the next section is super important. But we'll, before we get there, we have to develop some of the skills. And that's section 14.7 right here. So what are we doing in 14.7? Well, we're trying to find essentially, given a function, uh, where can we find values that uh, you know are local minimums and local maximums? And you did this in math, I think, calc AB in high school. Uh, but you did it with... Uh, one variable functions, right? So you had f of x is equal to something. Uh, here, we're dealing with multivariable functions, which includes like f of x comma y is equal to something. So we'll stick to two variables, and we want to see then where we're going to get local mins and local maxes, um, absolute mins, absolute maxes, and etc. So 14.7 will be broken up into two parts. Um, the first part is going to be this video, uh, and that's just going to be, you know, uh, extrema and saddle points, uh, in a general open region. In a general open region, okay. And so that just means I don't have any like restrictions on what X can be or what Y can be. And so that's what I mean in a general open region, um, no restrictions on any of my inputs to my function. All right, uh, the second part then is going to be uh, extrema uh, and saddle points, I should have just copied it, whatever, um, on a region uh, constrained by straight lines, constrained by straight lines. So for example, right, so that'll be the next video where I'll do like, oh, what's the maximum like in this triangular region in the XY plane or in this rectangle? but. Let's look at then uh, this first thing, extrema saddle points in a general open region. And let's consider the following. f of xy is equal to negative 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2y squared minus 4y. Okay, and I want to find uh, the extrema of this guy. So what do we do? Well, to find a critical point, right, so that's the first part, is to find critical points. And that's where the partial of x is equal to the partial of y is equal to 0. So here I got f of x, or f sub x, which is the partial of x, is negative 6x plus, or negative 6x squared plus 6x. And then the partial sub of y is f sub y, and that's equal to 4y minus 4. Okay? And so this guy, uh, we want that top guy equal to 0, we want the bottom guy equal to 0. And what we get up top is we get uh, x times negative 6x plus 6, and on the bottom I get, well, y is equal to 1, essentially, because that's the only solution to this guy. And then here we see that, oh, well, x can equal 0, or it can equal uh, positive 1, right? And, okay, so that means I have two uh, critical points. And what are they? Well, you just have to pair them up, right? So if x is 0, so we got x is 0 and y is 1, right? And then we got x is 1 and y is 1. So those are going to be my two critical points. And, you know, one question I get is how do you get better at finding critical points? Well, you kind of, you, you need to kind of case it like this. You need to play around with the x variable um, and see what, what it can be. You need to play around with the y um, and see what it can be. Occasionally, you'll get cases where, you know, you got, when you take the partial with respect to x, there'll still be left over some, like, y guys. Um, and in that case, you really just need to, you just need to uh, get good. Uh, you, you just need to have a lot of practice with these guys. Um, and I know having a lot of practice with, uh, with math homework in college is a bit hard because of the pace we move at. But you, you, just, need a vis you just need to get used to finding critical points, really. Um, and here, this was pretty straightforward that you can just solve for the x and the y's. But again, what if this was like x, y? And then you run into, right, if your partials have y's, if your partials with respect to x have y's in them, 
what do you do if you have part if your partials with respect to y have x in them what do you do and uh, we might visit an example like that later but anyways i digress and we we focus back to these to these two critical points uh zero one and one and one and now what do i want to do well the second part is to evaluate the hessian at 0, 1, and 1, 1, okay? And what is the Hessian? Well, the Hessian is equal to this matrix, which is f sub xx, f sub xy, f sub yx, and f sub yy. So essentially, you just got these second derivatives, and you want to take the determinant, okay? So we're, I'm going to write this with a square bracket, um, straight lines. So this means straight lines means takes the determinant in 240. You'll see this as well. And so that means I want to see what f of xx times f of yy minus 2 times f of xy is, right? Since f of xy is equal to f of yx. Um, so essentially, I take these guys and I subtract the, those guys multiplied. Right? And I want to find what, what that's going to be. So, okay. Um, let's see what that is. So at the point zero one, then, uh, well, we need to first find all these uh, derivatives. So we have f of x and we have f of y, right, which were uh, above. But f of x was equal to negative 6x squared plus 6x. Yeah, negative 6x squared plus 6x. And then f of y was equal to something, 4y minus 4. Okay. And now what? Now, well, f of xx, right? Because we need to find all these guys. We need to find all four of them. Uh, f sub xx is then f sub x, take a partial respect to x. That's negative 12x plus 6. Um, f sub yy is 4 because it's this guy with respect to y. And then f sub xy, well, I take this guy, I take the partial with respect to y. There's no y there, so that's just equal to 0, okay? And then, so then a Hessian at 0 comma 1 is going to be what? Well, it's going to be f sub xx at 0 comma 1, right? Which, so, uh, what is that? Well, f sub xx, x equals 0. So, let's see, how should we do this? Um, f sub xx at 0 comma 1 is equal to positive 6. f sub yy at 0 comma 1, well, that's just still 4. And then f sub xy is equal to 0. And so, uh, Hessian then at 0 comma 1 is equal to 24, right? And then uh, f sub xx at 1 comma 1 is equal to negative 6. f sub x, uh, f sub yy at 1 comma 1 is equal to 4. And f sub xy is going to be 0. And so the Hessian at 1 comma 1 is going to be negative 24. All right, and now what? Okay, now... Since this Hessian is negative, okay, since this Hessian is negative, uh, we have a negative sign right there. This automatically tells me that the point at 1 comma 1 is a saddle point, okay? So Hessian at 1 comma 1 is a saddle. And, okay, uh, so the Hessian's negative. That's a saddle point. Good. Now what? Now I need to see what the Hessian of, uh, now, this guy's positive. So what's the next step? The next step is to see what f sub xx is, all right? And if this is positive, so this is greater than zero, then look at f sub xx, all right? Uh, if f sub xx is greater than zero, you got a minimum. And if f sub xx is less than zero, you got a local maximum. And so since f sub xx is a positive six, um, we see that then we get a local min. So what do I get at one comma one? One comma one, this is a saddle. At zero comma one, I have a local minimum. All right, and yeah, that's 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 it. So this is on an open region. We found the, the critical points, all right? That's the first part. And the second part is the value of the Hessian. And again, there is no boundaries in this problem. And so that's what we're gonna consider in the next video then, is that we're gonna take this uh, same, like not the same problem, but like a similar problem. And we're just going to restrict it into a certain region. And we, uh, and that region is going to be with straight line boundaries. So, uh, like a triangle or a square. And then we're going to see how we find, uh, local mins, local maxes, absolute mins and maxes on those guys. 
And that's, that's another difference I should mention is that when you have a boundary, when you have a boundary or you have a constraint uh, or constraint, uh, you're going to have absolute minimums and maximums. But over the entire open region, uh, like the entire XY plane, there's not going to be an absolute minimum or an absolute maximum. There might be, but those are much harder to find. And so that's why they're not going to ask you to find them. But when you have a constraint, you're going to be asked to find absolutes. And again, we're going to take a look at that in the next video. So uh, see you guys there.